Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. The piece behind is finally finished. Yes, it's been in my workshop for weeks and I did have to change direction of the original plan that I had for this, but I'll explain more about that in the video. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you're not, welcome back and buckle up because this video is a bit longer than my usual stuff. Okay, where do we start with this one? We're starting outside and we're starting with oven cleaner. I hold my hands up. I cave to the viral oven cleaner hack. Intrigue got the better of me. I don't usually do hacks and all those kind of things, but I just wanted to try it. So I got some cheap oven cleaner and sprayed it on my piece. So the plan for this piece was to strip it and use some exposed wood along with some paint as well and a little bit of decoupage as you can see i left the oven cleaner on for a little while and then started to scrub it off um in my bucket i've just got some dixie bell white lightning cleaner and a scouring pad and it did start to take the finish off but not that great you can see me scrubbing away outside it was okay it, it i wouldn't do it again put it that way so oven cleaner verdict not worth it if i'm being brutally honest um it's not very often that i do strip things and the reason that i would have stripped this over sanding is because this is made up of veneer the wood grain is fairly pretty but it is a really thin veneer so if i was to sand this it's likely that i could go through the veneer and then my plan of having a little bit of wood grain exposed wouldn't have worked. As you can see, this is what's left after the oven cleaner. It took it off the doors slightly better than the top. So I just went in with the big guns and we're using a chemical stripper. So I just wanted to take the finish off. Like I say, I didn't want to sand at this stage because I was at risk of blowing through the veneer and then that would have compromised my project which didn't actually go according to plan anyway this is just a cheap and cheerful stripper that i got from wilco um it's less than 10 pounds it seems to be pretty good and i did two passes on the top the top seemed to be the worst in terms of being able to get that existing finish off um it was quite tough and um yeah I scraped it off with a sharp scraper and then reapplied another coat of stripper um because there was a little bit of uh, varnish still there being a little bit stubborn so i just went in with a second coat of stripper on the top and the rest of it just had one coat of stripper all over just to get the residue off that was left from the oven cleaner not working um so i just did a, a kind of a, a one a one of one coat over the um the rest of the piece and that seemed to shift it absolutely fine you can see there the varnish is coming off the top pretty well now and that exposed the wood underneath when you've used a chemical stripper it's important to obviously get any residue off so i always go in and clean it with dixie bell's white lightning because you can get some kind of gooey bits and obviously you don't want any of the chemical stripper left on the surface at all so i'm just giving it a really good scrub um, all over using a scouring pad and just scrubbing in all the nooks and crannies and then I rinsed it off with clean warm water afterwards. So here it is, it's stripped, it's looking a little bit patchy but that's okay and I was actually quite pleased with my efforts so far, it wasn't that painful to strip this piece. Um, I didn't strip the little cubby because I was going to paint that and I just went in with a really, really light sand. This is a 320 grit sandpaper, just to smooth out the surface, get rid of any patchiness. And just because I'm using a 320, um, that was just basically so that I'm not at any risk of blowing through the veneer because it was super, super thin. So I'm just going all over and you can see it's just making the finish nice and smooth and giving me that raw wood that I wanted. 
I'm going to whiz through this bit really quickly because this is the finish that never got to be. There's no point me talking through it because it never got completed. Um, all I'm doing here is applying salt water from the silk mineral paint range and my idea was to fade it out to the wood grain to kind of give uh, the wood grain kind of blending into the white paint and then on top of the white paint I was going to add decoupage however the decoupage design that I was going to use had actually sold out really really quickly from Dixie Bell um, I do believe it's actually back in stock now but at the time they weren't sure they were going to be able to get the stock back in stock so I decided to change my mind so I'm not going to go too much into this te technique at all because like I say it didn't get completed however this is me changing my mind I realized I needed to cover up that original detail that wasn't a kind of vibe for me and it also wasn't an option when I was originally going to have the wood grain exposed but now I realized I was going to paint it I could cover up that original detail so I used a wood filler to fill it in waited for it to dry and sanded that flat and then I applied a coat of grey boss primer all over the piece I only used one coat of boss and it seemed to hold up absolutely fine and then I'm going to paint the cubby yellow so this color is kernel mustard i will list all of the products that i've used in the description below with links to them as well like i always do just because there are quite a few on this particular video i then wanted to create a really bright vibrant kind of oriental vibe for this because my plan is to use the chinoiserie transfer and to give it a really kind of pretty oriental feel so this is part of a live video which is why you can see me rabbiting on just to the left hand side of the screen but basically what i'm doing here is applying barn red all over my piece and then i'm using caviar to give a quite a dramatic bit of shading around the door edges so the way I did it is applied barn red all over and then before the paint could have a chance to dry I then went in with the caviar and just kind of stippled it around the corners and because the barn red was still wet it kind of blends together. I did use a little spritz of water here and there just to help the paint move around and then my second coat I did introduce a little bit of honky tonk red in the very centre and that's just going to add a little bit more dimension. It's slightly brighter red, a lighter brighter red than barn red and then I went in with my barn red and my caviar as per the first coat so the only difference in my second coat is that I added that little bit of honky tonk red in the centre and then I did change my technique to blend this slightly because I wanted a little bit more of a dramatic blend so I went in a little bit heavier with the caviar and then I'm using the best dang brush just to kind of get those to melt together the trick to blending paint is not to use too much paint if you use too much you're just going to get in a lot of mess and you're going to have a lot of texture on your piece so use a small amount of paint and a very small amount of water most people use too much water I did as well it's a it's a very common mistake you think you need to drench your piece in order to get that paint to blend you actually don't a real fine spritz of water on the surface every now and again is all you need and also if you do find that your brush is getting a little bit kind of clogged up with paint just grab a rag or a lint free cloth and just wipe the excess off your bristles and then that way your paint doesn't kind of go muddy and you don't drag too much paint around on the surface So while I was waiting for the exterior to dry, I then carried on with my cubby. I want this cubby to be gold. And like I say, earlier on in the project, I undercoated that in Colonel Mustard. And now I'm applying Gold Digger from Moonshine Metallics range over the top of it. And this is really, the, the undercoat of mustard is really going to make that gold pop. So it's going to make it super vibrant. And I'm stippling it all over to get a little bit of texture in the gold because I am going to kind of antique it a little bit in keeping with the rest of the cabinet. So I'm just stippling that all over and in total I did two coats. Once that dried I then went in with an adhesive called Stick With Me 
and this is a specialist glue that's been formulated to use with Dixie Shine, which is a gold foil. It also comes in other colours, but I'm going to be using gold. So I'm just applying that all over the cubby with a chip brush. Again, I don't want any directional or brush stroke marks on this, hence the reason I'm kind of stippling it on. I also kind of want a, a not a solid gold finish. I kind of want a more of a distressed look. So I'm going to stipple it on. And then, like I say, once this glue has gone clear, it'll still be tacky, it won't dry, and that is when you can apply your Dixie Shine. So this comes in a few different metallic colours. I'm using gold. I'm just cutting small strips down and just working in small areas, just because it's more manageable to do that in this cubby hole. Um, I'm not going to get in a mess with the, with the foil sticking everywhere. And I'm just going to stick that down all over. I'm changing direction, so again, don't get any kind of direction directional marks and this is the kind of look that I'm going for. Now you don't have to top coat Dixie Shine, it is pretty durable without having a top coat on it but I'm going to top coat this and I'm using clear coat in satin and that's because I wanted to add a few more effects on top of this so I just want to lock that in and make sure that it's not going to kind of budge or anything it's also just going to create a barrier between this and my black wax so the black wax is going to help kind of bring the cupboard together obviously i've got quite a lot of black on the outside although it's paint it's a paint effect this is just going to kind of give that antique kind of more grungy look to the gold so i'm just applying my black wax in the corners for shading and then with the excess wax on my brush, I just kind of swirled it over the rest of it. So for the transfer, I'm actually going to use a very, very small part of this transfer. You will find that this transfer goes such a long way. It's a four sheet transfer and there's lots of separate elements that you can cut out and create your own design. But like I say, this is quite a small piece. I'm only going to use a small amount of this transfer on it so I am just cutting out the large branch and then I'm going to tape it in place so this is quite a good idea if you kind of know what design you want but you're not 100% sure and this way you can just get a good idea of the layout before you actually go ahead and apply your transfer on the piece and you can see I've just chosen a simple branch on the right hand side along with a single bird and I just feel like that's enough on this cabinet just because there is quite a lot going on and I just didn't want to kind of overdo it so as you can see I'm just working on releasing that transfer on the left hand side I'm just working my way slowly down I work in either a downwards um, down, a top to bottom motion or bottom to top whatever suits you best just work really really steadily and also if you are working on a larger piece like this you can cut away your kind of clear backing once it starts to come away so that you've not got a big huge sheet flapping around and you're trying to kind of grapple with that and it's getting in the way and then I'm just going to go over it with my finger really gently and just press that in place to make sure that it's stuck down on the surface. I did the same on the other side as well and I just made sure that the doors were opening fine, just ran a really sharp blade where the transfer goes slightly over the doors, just ran a really sharp blade and pressed that down with my fingers as well and then I'm just going to top coat it and I also did make a little mistake on the bird, um, I accidentally caught it with my nail and I'm going to show you how I rectified that in a second but I did want the exterior to pop with the interior oh there's Andy making an appearance obviously talking to me when I'm trying to work and I sanded the interior down I took the doors off with hindsight I should have done this sooner I probably should have done this in the first place before I applied the transfer um, because obviously I was at risk of damaging that so if you are planning on painting the inside of something maybe do that first um, but I didn't so I'm just applying two coats of the colour Oasis which is a really bright kind of teal blue colour and that's going to contrast with the exterior I should have mentioned that was from the Silk Mineral Paint range. If I am painting the interior of a cabinet, I usually do use that paint because it's super durable and doesn't need a top coat. So this is me touching up the transfer that I accidentally caught with my nails. So I took a little bit out of the wing and I also took a little bit out of the green body of the bird. So I'm just using a few different colors in Chalk Mineral Paint range 
to build up the colour again and kind of just match it in. The colours that I used here were Mason Dixon Grey for the wings because it's got that soft kind of lilac -y undertone to the grey wings. I used a little bit of peacock, a little bit of tree frog green, a little bit of evergreen and a little bit of caviar for shading and you can match up your transfers if you have done a bit of a boo-boo like I did with my nail, you can match transfers with the paint and no one will ever know and then I just gave it a final coat with clear coat just to seal it all up and to make sure the sheen level was uh, consistent across the whole piece. So one of the last things I did was to put a bit of gold gilding wax and just run it on my finger around the edges of the doors. That way you don't see the exposed wood around the doors, you see a bit of gold, it kind of ties the whole cabinet together and just completes the look. I also gave the same gold treatment to its little dinky legs just to highlight those and the handles as well, just to kind of give it a little bit more bling. Here's the contrast with the interior and the extra exterior, which I think works really well. And then I staged it with some peacock feathers that I found in my village. Thank you for watching the video. As always, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you next time. Bye.